Voices is sponsored by Blue Apron. Blue Apron makes home cooking more accessible by delivering fresh ingredients and recipes to your door in just the right quantities. They deliver, you prepare, and you and your family enjoy amazing meals together. Visit blueapron.com slash macvoices to get your first three meals free with free shipping and start cooking. Mac Voices is in Las Vegas for CES. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we get to make another visit to Matt uh, of Henge Docs, who has a lot of big news and a lot of great new products to talk about. Matt, it's good to see you as always. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming by so early in the morning here. It's uh, great to see you again, as every year. Well, yesterday I kept stopping by and they kept saying, he's at this meeting, he's at that meeting, he's out gathering up money. I don't know what, <laughs> what the story was. Yeah, it's been a pretty hectic CES and we have, I think, a for us, a record number of product launches this year, uh, along with Apple's new uh, products. We have some other announcements as well. Uh, probably the biggest one is our partnership with Apple and was part of the ABSP program, which is the Apple Business Solutions Provider. And that enables us to sell Apple products alongside of ours, direct to consumers, as well as enterprises. So people can come to our website or come to our sales team and actually save up to $150 on a new MacBook or buy things like our Click 2 and Apple's Magic Keyboard and Trackpad 2. Uh, together as a single bonded unit and uh, it's just a great buying experience and I think a huge vote of confidence from Apple in order to let us do that. I, I mean, that's big news because Apple just doesn't do that kind of thing with anybody. Uh, no, as far as I know we are the only people that are actually selling uh, Apple hardware alongside of our own um, inside of this particular program. Uh, so I think it's a huge opportunity for us and also Apple to deliver uh, a different kind of buying experience for customers that are really trying to outfit out uh, offices and uh, large-scale uh, education operations and even individual consumers they're just looking to upgrade to the new MacBook but also regain the connectivity that they've lost as things move forward uh, so it's a great way to bridge the past and the future and also just deal with what we've got going on right now that's uh, congratulations because when I when I when they told me that yesterday it's like wow that's that's a huge thing in today's world because again Apple was very 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 selective about who they who they allow to sell their stuff and integrate with. Uh, I wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, <laughs> it's a fantastic opportunity. And yeah, we're just really looking forward to uh, seeing customers' reactions from the buying process and also uh, just how well the new computers integrate with our systems and the, the new versions of those systems. So. so before we get to new products, let's talk about this since you have it in your hand, yeah. um, because I, I love this. This is such a nice solution for so many reasons. Uh, so this is the Click 2 um, with Apple's Magic Keyboard. So it's not the wireless keyboard anymore, it's a Magic Keyboard. And then Magic Trackpad 2 is the second version. Um, and we have this beautiful laser cut aluminum tray uh, and it holds both devices in place on these uh, attachment surfaces here, which are covered up by plastic. And you turn both of the units into a single streamlined device. And we've had a great response from this so far, along with the Click One, which is for the older versions of the Apple's products. Uh, so it's been great to get these out. Uh, the, the new trackpad and keyboard are great to use, and we just wanted to bring that nice aesthetic and match uh, their new design language. Well, and this is also great from where I sit, not just for an office or a home, but for an Apple TV where you really want a real keyboard and, and you can use the trackpad with it. So yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's just a nice looking unit. I should probably know the answer to this question, but can you actually use the trackpad with the Apple TV? I thought, I thought you could. Okay, I'm we'll have to, to check we'll have to too. fact check that folks. Cause that'd be pretty cool. That's, yeah, I think you could with the old Apple TV, but now with the new one, I'm not so, so sure. That'll be like the third Apple trick that I've learned the, <laughs> during the trade show that I, I didn't know about. I saw somebody doing something else uh, the other day. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head what it was, but it was pretty slick. Um, well, either that or we just misled a lot of people. Sorry, folks. Well, that's what uh, editing's for, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Although I probably won't cut that because it just shows how much I don't know. Um, so how about the new products? I know you've got three new products this year um, that we need to talk about. Sure do. Uh, we have so the we have our vertical docking line, which has evolved for the, the new Touch Bar MacBooks and the non-Touch Bar version. So the new MacBooks launched in late 2016. Um, our, the vertical dock now features, uh, there's no cables involved. It's a straight pass-through of the Thunderbolt and USB-C signals off the back. Um, it's a pretty slick setup. That's gonna be shipping in spring of 2017. 
Um, and that's a good segue into our next new product line, which is our tethered docking uh, system. So we're very literal with our product names. Uh, we have our horizontal docks, our vertical docks, and our tethered docks, which are uh, the tethered boxes. Uh, so we have a USB-C version of that and a Thunderbolt 3 version of that. Uh, the USB-C version will be shipping in uh, 2017. It gives you three USB-3 out, uh, sorry, the USB-C version gives three USB-3 USB out. It's a giant tongue twister. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, downstream USB-C, of course your upstream USB-C to connect to the computer, uh, a mini display port out, uh, full computer charging, SD card slot, uh, TRS audio jack so you can plug your, uh, your old style headsets into it still, um, and I'm missing a port here off the top of my head, uh, Ethernet, gigabit Ethernet. Uh, the reason why we put mini display port on it as opposed to HDMI uh, is because a lot of our customers are taking the new MacBooks and they're bridging them with their existing setups. And as you know, uh, most new MacBook users are also old MacBook users, so they already either have uh, cinema displays like we've got behind us here, or uh, other mini display port adapters that they were plugging in to adapt their computers. And it's also extremely hard to go from HDMI back to display port. But it's easy to go from any of the display ports to HDMI. So if you have one of those adapters, you can move over to that. So we are built this dock specifically for the MacBook market, um, and it actually uh, can sit underneath the MacBook as opposed to kind of floating around on your desk, or it can be plugged into one of our new vertical docks for port expansion. Um, and you get your full 85 watt MacBook charging on both the Thunderbolt 3 models and the USB-C models. Um, and the only difference between the USB-C and the Thunderbolt 3 models is that the Thunderbolt 3 models has two uh, downstream mini display ports. And of course the USB-C ports are replaced by Thunderbolt 3 ports. So I, that, was a, that was a lot of rundown there, but. <laughs> you know, well, it, it, it is, like you say, it's alphabet soup right now. It mm -hmm. seems like we're, we're, we've been talking about this being kind of the year of the dongle. Um, and maybe you guys can help turn it into the year of the dock so that we only have one or two connections to make. We get a lot of the old stuff back and still retain the benefits of the new. And that's the exact mentality of all of the products that we've launched here at CES is bridging the new computers with people's existing setups, but also making them future-proof. So when the Thunderbolt 3 ecosystem really starts to build out and as the connectors start to move over, those connectors are available on our products and you don't have to turn over your entire setup just for the sake of the new connection standards, but also recognizing that as things move forward, you're gonna want that connectivity and not be replacing all of your products every two or three years um, or as they cycle out. So this just makes that transition a lot more gracefully and uh, also all of the user benefits that come along with our typical products, which we can get into with the horizontal dock here in a second. So let's go to the horizontal dock. So the horizontal dock, uh, the existing uh, models that we have for the retina displays uh, have been doing uh, exceptionally well. It took us until about September of this year to actually get our production stabilized and be in stock all the time just to keep up with demand. So that response has been fantastic. Um, Apple dropped the new computers and we were able to uh, transfer our architecture over. Uh, so we have entirely new electronics on the inside, but even though the dock looks the same, um, it adapts to the new computer. So we're interfacing with all four either USB-Cs in USB-C mode or uh, Thunderbolt 3. And then we have three new models for the 15 inch touch bar, the 13 inch touch bar, and then the 13 without touch bar. And the new ones can drive up to four monitors uh, downstream, which is if you have a crazy setup, you can now have like a rate of monitors and expand out. Uh, you, with the Thunderbolt 3 versions, you can run multiple 5K monitors off of the uh, 15 inch version. Uh, so basically the port layout is, uh, let's see if I can do this off the top of my head, it's a lot. <laughs> uh, we have uh, our two audio ports on the other side so you can plug in uh, either a line out or a headset and switch between them on the fly. Uh, we have three USB 3 ports, the standard type A's that we're used to seeing. Um, either two downstream Thunderbolt 3's or USB C's depending on which version you have, the USB-C version, the Thunderbolt 3 version. Um, gigabit Ethernet, SD card slot, HDMI, and again, too many display ports. So uh, if you have an HDMI monitor, it's, you can plug in the HDMI port, or if you have a um, old cinema display, uh, you can plug that in as well. So just maximizing the compatibility, and you get that great no-touch docking experience where you just walk up, drop your computer in, and all your connections are made. 
totally automatically. And, and that's, I think, one of the appeals of these docs is right now, because I don't have one for the new MacBook, or new MacBook Pro, sorry, um, you know, got to go to the office and then start plugging things in on both sides. And pretty soon it looks like a small octopus. Uh, it gets the job done, but it's not convenient. And it, I'm sorry, it takes a little bit of time, and that's, that's a hassle. And so if I can just go walk in, put my MacBook, MacBook Pro down, dock engages, and I'm ready to go. That's, you know, the port expansion of the product is almost a, it's almost a prerequisite. It's a, a, probably the lowest bar to hit, but really the, the nature and the idea behind our products is that you have this touch-free docking experience, either with the vertical docks or with the horizontal dock. And the port expansion comes along as a, as a nice aside, but until things go fully wireless, this is the closest thing you can get to that wireless future where you're just dropping your computer in and all your connections are made and then it's also secured to your desk if you have a Kensington lock plugged in the back. So at our trade show here, we have everything locked down with passwords. Um, so you never have to unlock your computer from the Kensington lock. You just drop it in and it's secured automatically. Um, that, of course, is optional, but uh, a lot of enterprises and education and uh, healthcare, uh, they're looking for solutions to be able to lock these computers down for data security and physical security of their products to make sure they don't wander off. Yeah. So. It's that time where we, I, you mentioned availability, I think a little bit, but let's let's go through the three new models, the price and availability, as, okay. as we, we think, as, as we speak. Okay, so uh, all of the, the way that the bundling works, uh, if anybody out there is interested in purchasing a new MacBook, has been kind of holding off, uh, you can buy a new MacBook bundled through our website with a dock. Um, the MacBook will ship within four to five days, so you can get that now as well as any uh, you know, travel dongles or anything like that, that you want to carry with you uh, of Apple brand and things like that. We're reselling all of those. Uh, the dock, the tethered docks will begin shipping in March, um, the USB-C versions. Uh, the Thunderbolt 3 versions are available for pre-order email sign-up. Um, so all the USB-C products are available for pre-order right now. If you buy a MacBook bundle with it, you'll get the MacBook now, uh, and then the docks will ship later. The uh, USB-C versions of the horizontal docks, all the versions will be available in spring of 2017. So you get your computer now, you can buy any extra dongles that you want to travel with along with you, and then uh, the docks will ship in uh, the spring. And then all the Thunderbolt versions of the products are available for pre-order email sign-up if people are interested, and those will all be shipping in summer. I hope that was straightforward. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's as straightforward as it can be, because right now it is, we're, it seems like we're always in a time of transition, but this transition feels a little bit bigger as we try to take all of our old peripherals and still continue to get the value out of them to the point we have to replace them and still take advantage of the new stuff, so. Well, and there's a there's a lot of things that are on, uh, you know, in the past, there were really big leaps and changes with uh, the peripherals, and there still are, uh, but you know, your Thunderbolt 2 RAID setup on your desktop is going to be viable for years and years and years until the you know, platters give out. Uh, but so I think that the even as far as like computer replacement goes, we see that people are hanging on to their computers for longer and longer and longer. Uh, even in the automotive world, you know, cars hang on for longer and longer and longer. Tech has made even though uh, technology is increasing, uh, still on that wonderful uh, you know, exponential arc, the functional viability of the products that we own continue for longer and longer and longer and Whereas something that was three years old before now in your kind of computer desktop space uh, wasn't viable 10 years ago, now it's gonna maintain a lot longer. So we, there's gonna be this really interesting transition over the next four to five years where uh, everything's moving over these new connection standards, but we have to bridge them with the old things because it just doesn't make sense to throw everything out anymore because it is still viable. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Um, so the website where we send people to order all this great stuff that's, uh, and, and take advantage of you being an Apple reseller. I keep, I, that's so cool. And so you can get everything from power adapters, uh, MagSafe adapters, uh, travel adapters through our website. You can get the Apple Magic Keyboard and Trackpad for a discount bundled. Uh, even third party products we're offering very unique bundles uh, as well. So you can buy things like our iPhone iPad dock and a set of amazing audio engine speakers. Uh, if you've never checked out audio engine speakers before, those guys make an extremely good speaker 
bang for the buck wise, uh, I haven't found anything that can beat it. So we like partnering with products that uh, I think really complement Apple's aesthetic and function and our own function and aesthetic. Uh, and Audio Engine is one of those. So uh, you can get everything from Audio Engine speakers to our products all bundled together in these really unique uh, sort of value added bundles through our website. And the website is? Uh, it's hingedocs.com. Excellent. Yeah. Matt, congratulations on everything. It's great to see you, and uh, we'll do it again next year. Yeah, who knows, absolutely. Who knows, who knows what you'll be doing then? Oh, uh, we got some ideas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I thought you might. <laughs> yeah. Take care. All right. Thank you very much. Folks, we'll have more from CES in Las Vegas. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. All right. Thanks, Chuck. Visit macvoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.